The Merc with a Mouth wasn't always that way. In fact, when Deadpool first popped up in New Mutants number 98 in 1991, courtesy of Fabian Nassiza and Rob Liefeld, alongside the characters of Domino, Gideon, and Vanessa Carlisle, it was a much more serious character and kind of a copycat of DC Comics' Deathstroke. But he did still have some of that dark humor which set him apart. Deadpool was hired as an assassin for someone named Mr. Tolliver, who was eventually revealed to actually be named Gideon, and he was the estranged son of Cable from the future, but technically Cable's past, and his name was Tyler, aka Genesis. Now Deadpool was pretty successful in beating the New Mutants until Domino showed up and turned the tide, and he was sent back to Tolliver to report his failure. Deadpool was meant to be a returning villain for the character of Cable himself, who was a huge hit since he appeared in New Mutants. So essentially, he had very little in the way of backstory, which was due to the fact that comics at the time were coming out at a breakneck speed, introducing characters without backstories and seeing how they landed with fans. But it also allowed writers to tease readers with parts of characters' backstories in order to get them coming back to learn more. So after his appearance in New Mutants, Deadpool made a return in X-Force 1991 issue number 2 for a brief fight with Garrison Kane. This is when Deadpool's character started to be a little bit more fleshed out to not just be focused on Cable. Kane was a former member of Cable's team from the past, and he was going by the moniker Weapon X. Kane had survived an explosion and was abducted by the Weapon X program that enhanced characters like Wolverine, Sabretooth, and as we learn here, Deadpool as well. This is where we started to really see a fan base build up for Deadpool, who is now connected with the story of Wolverine, even if just by association. Now fast forward a little ways to X-Force 1991, number 14 and 15. This pitted Cable against Deadpool yet again, but this time it was kicked off when the real Domino made her debut and Vanessa Carlisle, aka Copycat, revealed herself as impersonating Domino up until this point after being hired by Tolliver to take down Cable. But things had changed for Vanessa. Her time impersonating Domino and working with X-Force had gotten her right in the feelies, and she even fell in love with Cable, leading her to turn on Tolliver. This got her stuck in the back by Deadpool, leading to an awesome fight with Cable, which saw the real Domino blast Deadpool in the back, ending this fight. But at the end of the story, we saw that both Deadpool and Vanessa had managed to still survive. This really made Deadpool a star character. Now, I think is a perfect time to talk about Deadpool's actual backstory. This story wasn't revealed all at once and was more so revealed over time, but we've whipped it up into one concise telling. Also, please take this with a grain of salt because a large amount of it comes courtesy of Deadpool himself, who is not a reliable narrator, and his story is also mixed up with writer retcons. So, to sum up the key details, way before he became Deadpool, the person who would become the character joined up with the military at 17 years old, but he found himself discharged not too long after which, and switched things up deciding to become an assassin. He then met Wade and Mercedes Wilson, a young couple that nursed him back to health after a failed job early in his career. It's believed that Deadpool probably ended both of their lives and took the Wade Wilson name. While Wade was working as a hired gun, he met and fell in love with Vanessa Carlisle. Vanessa essentially got kicked out of her home for being a shape-shifting mutant and then, just trying to survive, she became a lady of the night. During his time with Vanessa, Wade got an assignment to wipe out a British operative named Althea, but instead, Deadpool decided to wipe out everyone else instead. This did not go over well with Deadpool's employers, so in response, they tried to send Vanessa to the Shadow Realm, meaning they tried to pop a cap in Vanessa. Luckily for Wade and Vanessa, a special agent named Zoe Culloden, an employee of the interdimensional firm Landau, Luckman, Lake, and LaQuare, was keeping Wilson under surveillance, believing that he was destined to play a vital part in a potential threat to the entire world. She rescued Vanessa. Wade then learned that he had 34 inoperable brain tumors, and in a turn for him, he decided to essentially dump Vanessa to save her the pain of his passing, and even gave up trying chemo so that he would just pass away. Now, back in Canada, Wade was offered hope in the form of Department K, a special weapons development branch of the Canadian government. Wilson became a test subject in Department K's branch of the joint U.S.-Canadian Superhuman Enhancement Project, the Weapon X 
program. Now after a few horrible experiments, Wade was cured of his cancer and gained a healing factor based off of Wolverine's own healing factor that actually didn't fully manifest yet, but it left his body completely covered in scar tissue and made him pretty much hideous. Wade was supposed to join the Weapon X mercenary spy mole department of the situation, but because he was now so deformed and just haunting to behold, Weapon X instead sent him off to die quietly, locking him up in a place called Hospice, aka the workshop, ran by Dr. Kilbrew, who unbeknownst to Weapon X, ran sadistic experiments on the inmates with his head of security, Ajax, who just went by the name A-Man back then. Now these inmates essentially had a betting pool over who would kick the bucket first, and they called it the Deadpool. And yep, this is where Wade got the moniker of Deadpool. Wade wanted to end his own life and attempted this a few times but wasn't successful. He even went as far as taunting Ajax by using his real name, which is Francis, just like in the movies, in hopes that he would take Wade out. But instead, Ajax decided to lobotomize the subject closest to Wade, a guy named Worm. Wade didn't want his friend to suffer, so he put him out of his misery by ending his life. Under the rules of the facility, any patient who did something like that was to be taken out themselves, and so Ajax took out Wade's heart and left him for dead. This is when Wade's healing factor was jump started due to Wade's intense thirst for revenge. He regenerated, escaped the room, attacked the facility guards, and popped Ajax in the chest. Now, back to the actual timeline. Fabian Nassiza was the chosen writer to chronicle Wade's first ever solo comic, a four issue limited series titled Deadpool The Circle Chase in 1993. He was joined by artist Joe Madeira, and together they began adding the elements that have since become synonymous with Deadpool, like his relationship with Weasel and his doomed romance with Vanessa. Even Kane played a role as they took on their mutual enemy, Slayback. It was then that Mark Wade and artist Ian Churchill added to Wade's story in Deadpool Sins of the Past in 1994. They brought Wade together with Teresa Cassidy, the member of X-Force and daughter of X-Men member Banshee, known as Siren. Siren was one of the first characters to realize that Deadpool could be a hero. Together they took on Siren's uncle, Black Tom Cassidy, who fought alongside the Juggernaut. This is also when they came face to face with Dr. Dr. Kilbrew, the man who turned Wade into Deadpool in that backstory that we just talked about. It wasn't until 1997 that writer Joe Kelly and artist Ed McGuinness finally launched the first ever straight up Deadpool ongoing series. This is when we got the true backstory between Vanessa and Deadpool, when Joe Kelly teamed up with artist Aaron Lepresti for Deadpool Negative One. During this first volume of Deadpool, we were also introduced to Blind Al, who is basically like a motherly figure for Deadpool, and Weasel, who is a friend information broker broker and arms dealer for Deadpool. Now the next year in 1998's Deadpool and Death Annual Number 1, Kelly and artist Steve Harris finally explored the true origin of Deadpool as a Weapon X reject. They also established Ajax as Deadpool's first ever real nemesis and the right hand man of Dr. Kilbrew. And on top of all that, the real crux of the story, we learn that one of the greatest loves of Wade Wilson's life is actually the personification of death in the Marvel Universe, Mistress Death. What's crazy is that they would have actually made a perfect couple if it wasn't for Wade's basically unbeatable healing factor, which made him almost immortal. At around the same time as Deadpool and Death, Kelly and artist Walter McDaniel also brought Ajax and Dr. Kilbrew back into Wade's life in Deadpool number 17 and 19. By this time, Kilbrew was repentant for the sins he committed against Wade, but Ajax had transformed himself into a seemingly indestructible villain who was hellbent on sending both Kilbrew and and Deadpool to the afterlife, going about and wiping out as many surviving members of the Weapon X program. In their final showdown, both Wade and Kilbrew had to rise above their shared past to survive Ajax's assault and bring him down. Oh, also in issue 38, Loki curses Deadpool with movie star good looks, and it's hilarious. Now remember that whole Mistress Death romance? Well in Deadpool Funeral for a Freak in 2001, Mistress Death actually showed up to act on her feelings for Deadpool, but her other romance Antic simp, Thanos, decided to throw a wrench in this by showing up, cursing Deadpool with basically immortality, saying that even if Deadpool somehow does pass away, Thanos will literally move heaven and earth to bring him back just so he can't be with Mistress Death. And that is why Thanos is the biggest simp in comicdom. Now it's funny that given the origins with Cable, Deadpool and the gruff old Nathan Summers would actually go on to become really close friends in Cable and Deadpool if looks could kill from 2004. 
four. There are so many fun and awesome stories from the Cable and Deadpool books, like when Wade gets contracted by the One World Church to steal the facade virus, a new disease that turns everyone blue in order to achieve global equality with the side effect of melting people. Cable is also fully aware of this virus and has the goal of destroying it. Deadpool eventually gets the upper hand on Cable and gives it to the church, who turn around and infect both he and Cable with the virus just to test it out. Luckily, using his powers, Cable absorbs Deadpool into him and their genetic structure temporarily bonds. He ends up vomiting up Wade's essence which heals back into his old body. Cable then uses his ship's teleportation matrix which takes Deadpool along for the ride because they have become bonded. They appear in the same location, graphically bonded together before tearing themselves free. The anti-heroes learn that due to being bonded genetically, Cable's machines recognize them as the same entity, so whenever either of them teleports, the other comes along for the ride. So the two are almost forced to eventually get along with each other. Later in their series during Civil War, they team up to track down unregistered heroes, with Deadpool becoming a reserve Great Lakes Avenger before Squirrel Girl kicked him out for being a nuisance. This series is also where we met Bob, agent of Hydra, who became a sort of weird like best friend for Deadpool, kind of. Now not too long after Civil War, chronicled in Deadpool Annual Volume 3 from 2013, Deadpool ran into Madcap and a failed attempt to drive Deadpool insane led to a battle with Daredevil and Thor, with Thor electrocuting Deadpool and Madcap to dust. When the combined remains of the pair regenerated together, Madcap was absorbed into Deadpool and went on to live inside Wade's mind for a long time, manifesting in the form of one of Wade's inner voices. Now, when when the Skrull invasion began in Secret Invasion, Wade was held captive and trained Skrulls to be more unpredictable so as to better handle his abilities. He escaped when the Skrulls turned on one another and transmitted stolen intel files to Nick Fury, which was Wilson's real plan the whole time, which was then intercepted by Norman Osborn, who led the Avengers and Hammer. That's basically the whole reason that Iron Man got kicked out of S.H.I.E.L.D. This came courtesy of Deadpool Volume 4 in 2008 to 2012. Volume 4 is also where we saw Deadpool face off against Norman's Thunderbolts, he had a really awesome rivalry with Bullseye, became a pirate for a little bit, made his way to Utopia to become an X-Man, or more accurately, a probationary member under the watch of Domino until he finally became a full member. He went out into space, saved civilizations, and destroyed a moon. He met Lady Deadpool, fought his friends, an evil Deadpool, and spent a lot of time trying to actually pass away on into the afterlife. Then in 2009, we got Deadpool Annual Game of Death, where Deadpool is hired to extract a tycoon's son from a dangerous reality TV show, with Deadpool almost becoming a reality TV star, which is hilarious. Then his next biggest moment came in Uncanny X-Force from 2012, when Deadpool joined Archangel, Phantom X, Wolverine, and Psylocke to become the newest version of X-Force, tackling Black Ops missions like preventing the next Age of Apocalypse. Also in 2010, we got Deadpool Core, where the elders of the universe unite Deadpool with a team of other alternate reality Deadpools like Headpool, Kidpool, Dogpool, and Lady Deadpool from Earth 3010 to take on a mission to basically stop an Armageddon. Next up in 2012, we got the next volume of Deadpool, where Deadpool was hired by S.H.I.E.L.D. to destroy an army of magically resurrected zombie presidents, and I am not joking. He even got married to Sheikla for a very short period of time, joined up with Magneto to face Red Onslaught, and became the pacifist Zenpool during the Axis event, and he wiped out Ultimatum. Then in 2013, we got Deadpool. Deadpool Killustrated, where he takes on characters from classical literature, and specifically, I want to turn your attention to issue number three, where Deadpool faces Ebenezer Scrooge. Read that. He then fights Carnage in Deadpool vs. Carnage from 2014, then Secret Wars happen, destroying literally everything. Now that leaves us at 2015, where we start volume six of Deadpool, but then something happened in 2016. The first Deadpool movie was released in February 2016. It was a huge hit, grossing over $783 million dollars worldwide, making one of the highest grossing R-rated films at the time. Deadpool 2 then premiered two years later in May 2018, and the sequel had a higher budget than the first film, and it grossed over $785 million and scored 84% on Rotten Tomatoes and 7.6 out of 10 on IMDb. And now, Deadpool is among the most well-known comic book characters out there, and his third R-rated movie, finally bringing him into the MCU, just got its first teaser trailer at the Super Bowl, and us here at Top 10 Nerd, alongside you nerds, are pumped. But 
I have really kind of run out of time, so maybe we can do a part two to finish up his history. But for now, nerds, that is all. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Adam Andrews. This is Top 10 Nerd. I'll catch you on the flippy flop, and someone give me some chimichangas.